Hey guys, Ray from Love You RV. So on this video, I'm going to update you on our off-grid electrical system, including solar and batteries and chargers and inverters and all that sort of thing. So I have quite a convoluted system compared to a lot of people, mainly because we've been at this 11 years now. So the system is slowly built over time. Also, I review a lot of products and a lot of them have been incorporated into my my system kind of as a guinea pig thing to test. But uh, I thought this would be a good time to update you on exactly what's in our system now, how many solar panels we have. Now we're experimenting with ground panels. Um, also power stations. I'm taking my existing RV solar battery system that's built into the RV and then I'm adding an extra uh, box to it like a, a, a lithium power station box with its panels. So I've had to do a few things to make things work so I can transfer power between my my usual power bank in my RV, the batteries that live in my RV and the power station and back and forth. So like I say, it's got a little bit complex so people don't quite understand it. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the equipment and then I'm gonna give you a block diagram of everything involved in it. So let's get to it. Okay, let's start up on the roof. So at the front of the fifth wheel, I have four 100 watt Renogy panels and they were the earliest uh, system components that I installed and used them for many years and they're still there and then on the back since added these are two 170 watt Bouge RV panels and two more 100 watt Renogy panels so this is 540 watts of panels and at the front there's uh, 400 watts but I can also plug in the panel on the truck and make it 500 watts. So I can have uh, over a thousand watts coming off the roof. All these are wired in parallel. Um, I wanted to use parallel so I didn't have any shading issues. Like this is getting shaded by the flag right now, but it doesn't affect the other panels at all. Give you a look at the ground panel setup. So there's six 100 watt folding suitcase style Lion Energy rigid glass panels that I can set out as an array, and also a 400 watt folding thin panel EcoFlow panel. You can see how thin that is. So combined, that's up to 1,000 watts. So if I want to get max charge on the EcoFlow power station, I'll put all of them out and then I can get 800 watts of energy into it as far as charging. And also have the choice to put either or out. Uh, usually I like to put these out because they're more uh, um, wind resistant than of course the, the floppy kind of big uh, thin panel arrangement. Um, so when I put both of them out, I have it uh, wired these are all wired in parallel. They're a 24 volt panel, all wired together in parallel. And then I series them with this panel, which I believe is around a, a 50 volt panel. So they series together. And then I'm using this cord here, about a 25 foot cord that I can run back and into the, the RV through the water bay. There's a, a hole for the, the hose in that. Comes through and inside. And then here's where I store the, the EcoFlow power station. Um, I kind of usually leave this, uh, this one side open just so it gets lots of cooling as far as air goes. But it's never had a problem with overheating or anything. And you can see that yellow cord there. That goes off and into my main power distribution center in the RV where I have a transfer switch between the main rig power cable and then this cable. So when that's run into there, I can use all the AC outlets in the RV. On um, this black cable here is the solar charge. This black cable here is for AC charging. I have that just kind of hidden away down here and it comes out right here. And I can plug it into this outlet right here. Now this outlet 
is actually the inverter for my main RV battery bank uh, where I have the Line Energy 3 of lithium batteries. So I have a 315 amp hour um, battery bank in there and a 1000 watt inverter. So if I want to charge this box, kind of move energy from my main bank into this box, I can just plug this in. And then the EcoFlow power station allows me to set whatever charging wattage I want. So I could say maybe 400 watts or whatever, just in case I want to add some extra charging to it. Uh, what's plugged into it now is actually my, my little fridge freezer, which goes out that same thing. And usually I'll put it maybe under the slide. Right now the way I'm situated, the shade is here, so I just have it underneath the fifth wheel overhang there. Another thing I'll do is when we're traveling and towing, um, I'll have this box and leave it on so that it's powering all the, the outlets in the RV. And I can have the, my refrigerator, I have a, a dual gas electric refrigerator, I can have it switched over to electric mode so that the fridge is cooling as we go down the road. So what I'll do is that is I'll use this plug as well. Plug that into here so that the solar panels on the roof are charging my main battery bank and then they power the inverter outlet here which goes through and charges that box to go to the, to the main outlets and, and run the refrigerator. Also right now, um, because I have so much wattage out there this box is pretty well charged um, just in the morning time so what I do is I switch our uh, fridge over to electric and I just to save gas also I'll use this box to uh, heat water when it's when it's fully charged in the morning time I'll heat a heat a thing of water and I can do the dishes the daily dishes and we can have showers in that and it'll it'll do heat up a whole tank of water and then it'll be able to recoup its charge as well so that's pretty cool. Here's the RV battery bank I'm talking about. So inside this box is three Line Energy 1300, uh, UT1300 batteries. And uh, there is the inverter I was talking about, which is a 1000 watt inverter. So that's what I said I was using it to charge the, the portable power station. Its main job mainly is to run Anne's computer um, just to keep everything away. Like if that power station for some reason quits or something, um, this is more trustworthy. It's always going to be on and it keeps her, uh, her uh, computer alive. You don't want her computer to lose power right when she's doing a, a big photo edit. So we've always had that thing running and charging or powering her iMac computer. Even when we're on shore power, we have her hooked to that. Over here, I have uh, my dual solar chargers. They're both 40 amp MPT solar chargers and, and like I showed you in the diagram this one here actually has about 540 uh, watts of panel going into it right now this thing has 400 watts uh, I can al also add a ground panel to it I can actually put my ground panels into this if I want as well um, just by plugging it into a, a port I have on the front of the, the rig but right now you can see we're getting somewhere around between the two of them 40 amps coming in over here is a DC to DC charger. That's if I want to use the truck's alternator to charge my batteries. So while we're driving, the alternator powers this, and this can put up to 40, up to 40 amps of charging. I can also use solar and it at the same time to be going down the road so I can be charging, you know, 80 amps or so like that. And then this is a, a, a charger converter charger that I use when I'm, I'm generating charging this bank of batteries here. I have a, a little port over here on the side. You can see that black port and I can plug an extension cord into that and it runs straight into this charger which can put up to about 50 or 60 amps into this this battery. So all kinds of options here, different ways to charge and um, different ways to charge my batteries and, and use utilize power. I also carry this small little power box. It's kind of a nice little utility box. I use it for uh, powering my electric smoker when I'm out grilling. Also, it lives in the, in the truck and I can use it actually to power the fridge freezer. You know, if we're in bear country or something and I, I can't keep the freezer outside, I'll stick it into the back seat. Uh, it has its own built-in lithium battery, but it doesn't last too long, so I'll plug it into the 
this 12 volt port and utilize this in the truck to keep the freezer working and then I can always bring this in and recharge it and then put it back out when I need to do that. Also I like if I'm doing projects and I need to plug in a soldering iron or some kind of little power power thing I have that nice and handy and uses it when she's doing photography and she needs to power a camera for time lapses and stuff like that or charge her drone so works out having having it as a little portable station. In our toilet room here I have a few different uh, electrical controls. I can turn off one of the solar arrays down here and also the other solar array up here so it's just a couple battery switches just if I want to turn off those uh, those solar panels feeding down into the charge controller sometimes you don't want them on or want to do maintenance on it or whatever. Um, also I have a trimetric battery monitor that uh, monitors the the state of the batteries, voltage and amperage. He's currently we're putting in about 30 something amps and we're at 94% on our batteries. And then down here that's actually a, a, is a monitor for my um, my propane tanks. Tells me how much I have in the propane tanks. I also have an app for that and I also have an app for this and then I also have an app for the EcoFlow, so on my phone I can also check all that. Another way I can move power around, say my uh, EcoFlow power box is full or has a pretty good charge in it, and but my main battery bank is low, I can always come in here and switch this converter on and that'll take power from my EcoFlow box via the transfer switch through this distribution panel and then it will charge use the converter charger in there to charge my main battery bank just another option okay so let me explain what you just saw in a block diagram hopefully you can make better sense of it it can be kind of confusing when you just see it uh, in real life uh, up on the roof um, I have the 540 watt array and it's separate from the 400 watt array up there. And they go both go through 40 amp MPPT controllers. So there's dual controllers feeding my RV lithium battery bank, the three Lion Energy 105 amp hour batteries. So that's a total capacity of 4,035 watt hours. Uh, that basically powers all my RV 12 volt circuits, you know, all the lights in the RV any little circuits that need to be powered like the furnace, furnace fan, water pump, all that sort of thing, um, stereo, anything that's 12 volt in the RV gets powered off those batteries. Now that, that also powers a 1000 watt inverter that I've had for a long time. That was one, one of the first things I installed in this RV 11 years ago, still running actually, and it powers a separate wall, a couple separate wall plugs that I installed that are just dedicated to that inverter and that's what Ann's computer plugs into and a few other odds and ends can be plugged into that. That like I say can also charge my EcoFlex Delta portable power station that I showed you sitting in, in the basement storage. It has 2116 watt hours so my total capacity in the RV now is 6000 watt hours. Now that thing uh, uh, outputs its power, its AC power via a transfer switch to all my R RV AC power switches. Um, so all all the plugs, anything that runs on AC like the microwave, any of the plugs that we plug an appliance into, the TV plugs, all that sort of thing, air conditioner, it can even run the air conditioner if I wanted to. Um, so that all goes through that system and that gets fed, it gets recharged via the inverter. I can bring the power over here via the inverter to charge off these batteries, or I can use a ground array. So that was, there's a 600 watt ground array. I showed you the, the Lion Energy six panels there, or there's the other ground array that's the EcoFlow's own 400 watt flexible panel. And out of those, you can put a maximum of 800 watts into this. Now, this thing can also be charged off of shore power, or I could take this generator 
and plug it in that I did in one of the tests and I can actually put in 1600 watt watts of charging power from the generator so there's several different ways to charge that over here I have a 60 amp converter charger that I showed you and I and I can plug my generator straight into that and charge these batteries or from the truck I showed you a DC to DC charger that off the alternator the power from the battery and alternator in the truck goes through that and can charge this and another way I can charge these batteries is if I can take power from the EcoFlow power station here by the transfer switch and the AC power distribution panel and flick on its OEM converter charger that I have here and then it will actually send power at about 50 amps into my RV batteries. If you'd like to delve deeper into any of these things, I'll, I'll leave a bunch of links in the description and on the blog post that link back to all the different things that you see in this uh, diagram. Well, there you go. That's the current state of things as far as my off-grid electrical system goes. I think these uh, ground panels are going to be really good in combination with that power box when we get back to the Pacific Northwest. Because a lot of times you're camped under trees. A lot of the state and provincial parks up there have a lot of treed sites. So I'll be able to actually move that portable box using an extension cord quite a ways from the rig and then put these out and use their cords so I can get a good 75 feet or so away from the RV if I need to get them into the sun. So that'll help me out. It's kind of a convoluted system, but it's been built over the course of the last 11 years. That's why it's not like I started fresh and decided what to do it's kind of like I've kind of added on and added on and that's sort of the current state of things I'm gonna have the uh, eco flow the final video I promised a third video kind of my final pros and cons on the eco flow box and the solar panel setup so look for that in the future I'm also gonna do a uh, uh, water and waste update and go through all the the different systems I have for for putting the fresh water into the RVs and making it safe for drinking and also disposing of our waste. I've added a few pieces of equipment lately. You can see here I have a 60 gallon bladder just getting ready to uh, pump it into the, the RV, but that'll be coming up soon, so look for that. Till next time, Ray from loveyrv.com. Thanks for watching, everyone. Cheers, folks.